Hello guys, welcome to Earth Science Week 2. Um, today is Wednesday. We're going to be talking about the history of evolution. And we're going to talk mainly about this guy, Charles Darwin, um, after today. Today is, is the people leading up to him. But Charles Darwin is really the father of evolution, the one who, the one who ha got the idea rolling. Um, and really evolution is what explains why we have so much diversity here on Earth. Now, the, the idea started with Aristotle. Aristotle had this idea of organizing life, right? And he organized them kind of like this, right? On this whole ladder system where, where you had the most simple things down here and then more, slightly more complex and then slightly more complex. And as things got more and more complex, you moved up this like ladder system. Um, and that idea lasted for for about 2000 years, right? He saw, he saw, for example, he saw earthworms and he saw snakes and he would put earthworms lower on the ladder and snakes slightly higher on the ladder because snakes are slightly more complex, right? You had this little wormy dude and you have this little snaky dude. And they look very similar except the snake has a few features that are slightly different and slightly more complex and that's why he would organize it like that. The next person who helped us out with this whole system is Linnaeus. And what Linnaeus did is he's the first one to group the similar organisms together and assign them certain names. And these names, we call them binomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature was yesterday's class. We talked about it. I had a video on it. And what binomial nomenclature is, it's the genus and the species of a creature. And remember, we, we did um, the day one on Monday. We talked about this, the levels of organization, domain, Kingdom, phylum, class, uh, family, order, genus, and species last. Right? Those are those are the the levels of organization. And when we're naming, when we're do, using binomial nomenclature, we're using just the genus and the species. For example, for humans, our genus is Homo, and our species is Sapiens. So that's why we're called Homo sapien. That's our binomial nomenclature. And then Charles Lyell, he came up with the idea of uniformitarianism. What that is, it's that geological processes on Earth happen at very consistent, slow rates. And this gave us the idea that Earth wasn't actually just 10,000 years old or so. Earth was actually millions of years old. And he wrote a book on this whole idea. They're called The Principles of Geology. And in the Principles of Geology, after Darwin read that book, it helped him explain why in the Andes Mountains, which is 12,000 feet above sea level, level, he was able to find seashells, right? There's really no other, try, try to think about other than, other than mountains growing over time, how can you have these seashells that are in the Andes Mountains? Um, a lot of people, what they would think is that, oh, oh, animals carried them, but not, not a whole lot of animals who live on 12,000 feet below sea level would go up to the top of the Andes Mountains. And even, even if they did, why would they carry seashells, right? What, what's the whole idea behind that? Um, so the fact that mountains grow slowly over time is one of the few ide uh, things that can explain the seashells up in the Andes Mountains. And this, this really expanded the age of Earth, right? We originally thought it was about 10,000 years old, and now we know it's millions of years old. And there's a lot of other evidence behind that, not just the seashells. Now, this next guy who came up with an idea is um, Lamarck. What Lamarck did in 1809 is he understood and explained that change happens over time. And it doesn't just happen over time. It happens slowly over time. Um, and this is the whole, what is evolution? If I ask you that and you tell me change over time, I'm okay with that. Just tell me that like species change over time, right? Or living things change slowly over time. But that's the whole idea that Lamarck came up with. But he came up with something else that was wrong. Um, he came up with the idea that species acquired traits over time during their life cycle. So he he assumed, right, that if I that if I was here. If this was me, right, and I was born with two arms and two legs, and I somehow lost my left arm, and then I had a baby, right, that baby would be born without a left arm, it'd be born with a right arm, right, that's, 
that's I acquired the trait of losing a left arm and it got chopped off. Right, that was his idea, and you could tell that's just that's just flat out wrong. The way he explained it made a little bit more scientific sense, but that's really what he was trying to say, and that's the truth behind it. Um, his idea was called the u the law of use and disuse. If you use something, a body part, it gets stronger. If you don't use a body part, it starts to go away. It deteriorates. So, um, and those are those answers right there. So. The way he explained it is with really giraffes and blacksmiths, right? He, let's say, let's say the giraffe. The giraffe was just a regular horsey one day, but then it got put into this environment where only it had access to these trees that were high above the ground, and he couldn't eat that. So he would stretch his little neck out, right? And over time, he'd be able to stretch out his neck farther, and then that kid, then that next horse would have a baby, and that baby would have a longer neck, and then a longer neck, and then over time, eventually, they'd have a long enough neck to eat the, the the leaves from this tree, and then that's why giraffes were born with long necks. That's the way he explained it. And yes, that is wrong, but that was the best explanation we had for a little while, right? Another example is like a blacksmith, as in his time, the blacksmith the blacksmiths had very muscular arms, mostly all of them. And the way he explained that is because, well, the original blacksmith, the father, had had big arms. They acquired the trait of the trait of having big arms, and then he they passed on those big arm traits to their sons, where the sons had big arms, and they they produced right uh, weapons and beat beat things with a hammer. Um, really, we know now that that's you just you just get stronger if you use your muscles. Your muscles grow over time. And then he also had the idea of like, why did why do snakes have no legs? Well, maybe it's because snakes don't use their legs, and then they just over time lost their legs, like uh, use it or lose it kind of thing. Um, so, and then here's his idea again, right? The original giraffe with a short neck stretched his neck to get to the high tree tops, and over time, right, the babies would have long enough necks to reach those tree tops. This is incorrect. It's not the right answer. What he did have correct though is that this change happens over time it happens a lot slow it's a lot slower than what he would imagine right and it's not a gradual process it's a process that happens when you have um let's just point out this is wrong it's a process that happens when you have mutations and really lamarck did not understand the idea behind genetics and how traits were passed to their their kids or genes or mutations so that's why he had the idea wrong he didn't really understand the whole um genetic side of it not until Mendel did his uh, experiments that you guys are going to talk about next year. But really, this, this is all you need to know. We have genes that explain who we are. In your genes, before you're born, you have some DNA that gets mutated, right? Let me draw some mutated DNA. It gets mutated. And then that, that mutated DNA is what gets passed on to your kids. Right, the original DNA of what your parents had is different than your DNA because you had a mutation. And then if that if that let's say that I have the mutation of a third arm, right? And then in this new multitasking world, I got hired more and I made more money with the third arm. And then and then I would be able to have more babies with third arms, right? And then over time, there'd be more more and more children with those traits with the third arm. Um, and then that's how that would go. Now let's say the other happened. The other thing happened. I have I had I had a third, I was born with a third arm, and then nobody wanted to talk to me, and then I wasn't able to meet anyone, and then I died without having kids, and then my trait of having a third arm wouldn't get passed on to my children. Um, so the, this, this idea, this, this is where Lamarck went wrong with his idea of use and misuse. All right, bye guys, have a great day.